Good morning, good weather here now for the first time in months in Ireland and uh, I'm dealing with cattle drenches and this is farming and uh, of course people that's not interested in this turn off. The big problem I have uh, is that there's such varied stuff that's important to so many and then how do you find videos and that is the problem. You might want to tell someone he had a great video up three weeks ago and you can't find it. It is difficult, even I find it difficult by times anyway we're working on that but this is uh cattle drenches and uh, combating vermin in cattle such as uh, lung worms uh, fluke liver fluke and all of that sort of stuff okay now one of the most simple ways is about two months two it's about 20 years on the go or longer is ivermec and its copies it's made in Belgium, I think, and it works. And it's injected in under the skin, not into the muscle, in under the skin. And once you get the needle in a bit, you just push it on out, and uh, that's that. Now, one of the disadvantages is that you can get droplets coming out through the hole in the skin. So I generally give it a wee pull a bit. Also, if the base goes forward against the sculling gate, they can squeeze it out. So that's probably the disadvantage. You can give it behind the shoulder too, depending on the condition of the cattle. Once it's under the skin, it works the same as a pour on, except it's in under the skin. So it's it's a proven formula. And I think if you have a, well, I generally only dose twice a year. Uh, I think if you do it the way I'm saying, twice a year, I have a make or copy once and then the other dose still have now that's all right so now we've showed about the subcutaneous uh, injection under the skin with ivermec or it's one of its other clones okay you have that the next thing is pour on and there's various types of pour on and they're getting smaller in volume all the time now you can get a, a device a, a shears that will cut the hair down the down the back of the the animal and you'll see them coming into the mart now the only thing about that in cold in warm weather it's a great idea but in cold weather the hair was put on them for a purpose it's like a, a, a I, I i had a dog one time a gun dog and uh, he had a big long tail and everyone said why did you cut the tail of him and i said the tail was put on him for a purpose it hasn't stopped him doing anything so same with the hair now that's a matter of personal opinion. I'm not pushing that on you. But the oak for cutting it, the, the shears, will cost you about €320. Euros. And then you have an extra piece of kit. You have the dehorner, which the, the gas one is the best. It has to be minded. And now you have this to mind. And between the whole thing, you have a lot to mind. So it's up to yourself. If you want to buy a shearer, definitely if you're showing cattle, it looks well. But I don't go down that way. Mostly because why would I spend me money on that? Now, the next thing then is doing the pour on with a syringe. And I find this an excellent way. I get a syringe and I, fi I file or grind off the top and give it a wee poke in there so that it's, this isn't sharp. So a sharp syringe is dangerous. It means it'll pierce you. So get it flat across the top that it can't go into your hand. Common sense is needed. Now get the longest needle you can. And these are the best type of syringes here. Get the longest needle you can. You can use the plastic ones, but if you're going to use plastic, have a few of them spares. Don't be reliant on one of them. So then you suck up your dose, and this is very accurate. You go to the half mil, and there's a thing here in it. And uh, now, this is a pour on. So instead of pouring on, like with, with, a, with, a, with a wee container, and letting it down on the hair, and I'm not so sure of that, and especially with the doses now with very small volume, it can get stuck on the hair and how do you know it's going to be all right and well what happens if there comes rain and all of that so what i what i do and no doubt the pour on is the it will be the future because people won't struggle with cattle no matter what they're doing i get it anyway and i rub it up the center of the beast back and cattle even wild ones love to have something touch on their back and in at the butt of the tail so where the tail is coming out cattle are always very itchy just here and if you get them in the pen and all and give them a wee scratch there just where the tail joins the back at the top uh, you'll find them going down they love that so always give them a wee touch there and even though i wouldn't suggest putting the pour on there it's too far back you can give them a wee rub of it or whatever and then move up to the back uh, as you get up the back then uh, give them a little a little squirt of it out along the back but only 
only go one third in a particular part of the back. Now that should calm them a bit because what you want to get onto is the back of the head. The one part you'll get it very hard for them to stay still is behind the head, the well at the back of the head. So if you go straight for it, they'll go mad like this and you're in all of this trouble. Another way is to have a stick like a buyer or something and give them a wee poke in there. And after 10 or 11 pokes, they'll eventually give up and they'll let you do it. But you might just be able to get the, when you have them halfway up, put your syringe over to the head. If they're going to bowl, keep it sideways like this. If they're going to kick and bowl, just leave it there for a while, come back again and try and get the well of the head done because the instruction says the back of the head is vital. So however long it takes, you might have to sing a song. Wait, just leave them there and rub them like that. Eventually, the cat, and then you get, give them the, the bit down on the head and straight down on the head. like. Then you can pull back and finish them off. Now, the beauty of that is the stuff is right where it needs to be. It doesn't matter what hair there is. And in fact, if it rains, there's lanol in the hair of an animal and that helps to keep the rain off. But if you can keep them in for a while, all the better. So is that, that's, an idea how I would, uh, how, how I do that. And I made a video before and nobody took issue with it. Now, the next thing is the oral dose. And that's the traditional old dose. And it used to be done with a dosing bottle. Now, uh, a Budweiser bottle can be used as glass and it has been used. I shudder the thought of it. If the base comes down on that glass with the teeth and breaks the glass, you have a mess. I wouldn't let... Uh, glass containers near anything like that. It is madness. Uh, but you can get the dosing bottle long ago. Now you won't get it. The dosing bottles are gone. Uh, maybe they're in some shops. Ask for them. If they have them, I'd buy a couple. The great thing is they're plastic and they hold the right amount of stuff and there's a, a, a calibration on them and all that. And eventually the cattle will chew the ends of them and you just throw them out. So that's the thing. Always have a few extra. That's one. So the other then idea is that, uh, would you believe it, I often dose big cattle and bulls with the dosing bottle. But it's a bit of work. And uh, I'd have a prop under them here. And they'll put the head down and they won't let you put the dose in. They'll, they'll try to defeat you no matter what you do. So, but I always succeed in the long run, they kind of give up. But it's too much work. The young people won't do that anymore. I don't know how, I, I used to dose the biggest cows. But anyway, now you want the easier way if you can. So we're going to look at what ways I was using uh, to, to dose them. So one system is the simple syringe. They're cheap. You'd buy a lot of them for a tenner. You go to the ordinary stores, the ordinary hardware and that, you get them, farm supply shops and that, and have a few of them. And they're calibrated exactly. They're, it doesn't matter if they break, they're no harm. And there's a good enough uh, thing here on them. Uh, just buy them anywhere. They have use for everything. There should be at least five of them at every farmhouse if it's only to squirt grease on something or whatever. Now, I have often given young calves, you catch them, you put your hand in around their tongue, you get their tongue in. You wouldn't believe they cannot bite you if you do it right. And then you put this down as far as you can and you push. But even with that, I find that the uh, some of them will spit out some of it and you will lose it. It's very hard, it's a hard mess when that happens. So what I used to do and I still do is I get a piece of uh, the tape, the, the, the pipe you buy, you buy it in hardware shops, it's braided tape or even plain plastic tape. Sorry, I'm saying tape, pipe, P-I-P-E. It's just hard to think of everything. I made a mistake in the last video and when I saw it, I had to take it down. It was that stupid looking. So this is the pipe here. Now that's the one that comes with the, with the doser, but I'd rather ordinary, ordinary um, pipe that you buy in a hardware shop. And I'd just go about that much and make sure it fits up well on this. Now, when you buy this, there may come a, a, a cap on the top of it. And if that cap is needed to fit the pipe, you could glue it on with, with not with super glue, with uh, epoxy resin uh, glue that, that'll keep the cap on it and then you can push this up and out and down now you can load this two ways you can suck it up or you can take this out like this and it's something this will stick in it so for that reason if you get a, a craft knife and cut the rim off it here you don't need this rim cut that rim off it or even we file might get off it and then because you don't want anything hobbling this you want to be able to put it in and out to suit you so when you, you can put your dose in here and keep your finger like this 
and put in your dose and, and then lift it up like this and gradually squeeze it out. It's a bit messy, but that will work. Now, when you have the end, the piece of pipe on it, that'll go down the animal's throat. That's a big no-no. So what you do is you put a jubilee clip here, say strong, and you attach a good piece of strong plastic cord, very, very light rope, or indeed a piece of wire, or something one of the best things of all is a piece of electrical wire single core wire it has a plastic cover on it you see and it can't really do much harm but don't leave any loose wires hanging out whatever way just that if it pulls out that it can't go it can't get down the animal's throat and you could tie that onto something or tie it onto your wrist or, or whatever you like now when you're doing a calf you get them in like that and you have this thing you say about that much longer when you put that down there it'll go right down his throat and there's no comeback and that is about the best dosage system i know now i'm sure you can buy doses that'll do that for you but be, even for a calf i'd like them that length they're only at the butt of the tongue he'll he'll get get it up so that's not a bad idea for the basic fella but nowadays a lot of people won't do that either and so you're back to uh, other ways now the next thing you have on the go is this type of doser this is a cheap doser i'd say chinese but it comes with this stainless steel um uh, hook now one of the things you need to learn with this is this is the angle of this so look at it like this and see when this is straight so you, some people will have this up up and get up along the animal's um, head and that means this is almost sticking out the far side that's wrong it should be it should be halfway like if this boob is the animal's head that's the way it should really be do you see there like that so get get used to that now and these things can be got into the animal yeah they'll put their head down and everything else but when you fiddle it around a bit especially if you have the two hands and it's great if you have a helper not all as you do uh, when you get this in you pull it now they'll normally pull against you or they'll do all kinds of things but once this is down the throat you can now squeeze out your stuff now if i could i'd have this for young cattle but i'd like one another two inches to three inches two inches longer anyway because the further down it goes the least chance to have of coughing it up again and even with this i've had them coughing it up when it was fully in the other thing even you have a restraint under the neck like this it's amazing how they'll get down and get it out but of all the applicators for big cows i think this is probably one of the best it has a few severe drawbacks and one of them is that it contains nearly enough in this bit of a pipe here and this there's enough to dose a calf if not a big cow i'd say that pipe will hold 35 mil easily the other point is if there's any suction around it'll pull the stuff up and down so there's a huge difference in having this full to the brim with stuff and having it empty if you were to if you were to uh put this full in here and and have it out like this and squeeze it uh you could see nothing coming out because the pipe has a huge capacity okay now the other problem is if there's any suction it'll suck the stuff back up and it'll do that as well now so that's the idea so, but still it has an application so my i got the whole kit and i was figuring out how it works and don't forget if you ever buy them the springs like this these are anti-kink these are a great job these stop it kinking and there comes light plastic pipe with it so what i did uh when i started off because i did not expect this to work i mean this is only 94 euros and this yoke here alone is worth 40 euros it's a good yoke you know but um uh, it has a knob on the end of it too a knob here and that's important it, stops injuring the animal and a good plastic handle on it and an attachment on this end here so all of that's good so what i ended up doing was i just got my syringe i put two nails up on the on the on the shed where this is like this so in other words it can't get out except through here so what i did then was i uh, i had the end of this i filled my syringe and i put it in and then I injected that out, okay? And that worked to an extent. But then when you go to pull this out, it had pulled the contents of the pipe back out. 
Now, what we are doing this is to dilute the, 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 the dredge. The, it's, it's a suspension. Dilute it with water. Some people say you should give it as it is. I don't know. I had my cattle in from the night before so that the, the, they'd be somewhat empty and leave them in an hour or two after it. I think it's a good job. So that's, that's the problem with this. How do you manage the space that's inside in this, which would dose a calf? So anyway, uh, what I did was I made sure nothing escaped and I kept getting the right dose in here. And I always give a little extra. We all do that. And then back in here and, and in again and dose. And even the big cows, they do a bit, but it works. Now they put the head down, even if they do, they have a tendency to come up with you and you get it in. And that's why it's so important to have this angle right, that it's straight for the throat. You might think, oh, this is the way, pull it like this. No, that's the way there. So get the, try and get it out. Now the problem is you can't see what's coming out of here. And if that were to be made of plastic, it wouldn't last long. But a good plastic one of them would not be a bad idea either. It might not last too long, but it might not be a bad idea. So now let's look what comes with this. The official, the official yoke for doing this. So we'll have a look at that. So the idea is you get this bottle and someone posted there that the drill a wee hole here, that's all right, whatever. Uh, it will leave it open then if you want to keep it, you know. Now another way would be have a, a, a bottle purpose built and fill it up from a new bottle and wash it out clean before you use it. The wee hole, it'd be all right there. I don't know, I'm just telling you what to say. Some kind of a string to put over your shoulder, whatever. If it works, I'd put a proper, uh, like a, 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 a strap that you get on a, a knapsack sprayer. But this is the idea, and then this comes out like this. Now, don't people will say you should have cut this shorter. Yeah, of course, this, they give you plenty of this because in some places there might be somebody doing the pushing and the pulling and somebody put doing the dosing. So you can just call to your friend, wait, no. And they push it in and that's all over and, and 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 that's the general idea if you have help that's good now so that's that's this situation this drips down under gravity like that now here is the here is the oak that i found didn't work well for me even though some other people swear by it now i'd say this is a cheap enough job it's a prima <laughs> it's a prima so what happens is you have a pipe coming out like that going into your your hook and then you have a pipe here coming out from the box here and it goes in it goes in here on this lad here okay and this goes up and down now that's all right i think you get the general idea there's a handle here which broke on this the first go and that goes like that it's a big, big, strong spring, and it's strong for a purpose. I'll tell you one thing. If you'd done 100 cattle, you'd have very strong hands. If, you know, you should, eventually you'd have the strongest thumbs. And by right, to, you should be using both sides to keep the two good. But I don't know. I think my hands are good enough. I don't really want them uh, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, strong. Now, on this here goes a white fella that goes in here, and it goes up through this. And that can be turned. So there's a little indent. There's a little trigger here on this. Let's see how I it here somewhere. It's there somewhere. Uh, I'm not too sure. But there's a little trigger here. And what happens is when you put this in. And there's a little notch here. To show you how to put it in right. And you screw up this. Uh, it, it controls how deep. How deep the thing goes. So if you set it for a low amount, it'll only will say go, go maybe to there. See, that's what you're doing. So for a small dose, that's what you're doing. For a high dose, this is what you're doing. Now you can hear that the spring and the valve is working in it. But the problem is that the, the suspension is very thick. It's as thick as thick oil. And I found that as this was coming up, it did come out through the pipe here, and I'll show you where it comes out, but I, I wasn't happy with the speed at which it came out. And I couldn't know, was it getting the full dose? So here's the thing. You can't push in. You can push in, you can't suck out. That's quite a lot of pressure. 
Now, it's not that it doesn't work, but then you have just these two, uh, an O-ring, an O-ring and, and, and a sort of a fuzzy lad here. That level of pressure is not needed at all. A small stainless steel poppet valve with the minimal amount of a spring would do as good. That's over tight. Now, in here, this screws off. And there's the, there's the, there's the valve there. That's a fierce push. That is a fierce push. Quarter of that would do. All that has to do is to stop the 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 pressure coming back and stop the stuff going up and there would be a bit of gravity so that's a problem now the next thing that happens is when this goes in here like this and then you push this it sucks in the stuff and you can see that it's doing it there now look but uh, then when you push it down there's an equal valve here on this end to stop it running back up so that it's the, you see now watch see so, so so as i suck this up the noise is from this one so we give this a push so it doesn't see a truth to stop it going the other way so there's two valves one just one to make sure sorry one to make sure it's going out and one to make sure it's coming in here even this one from what i can see uh, oh it's very ignorant it's very ignorant but you can have a go if you want to it takes a sight of power to push it down and it takes a sight of power to let it up the spring is enormous in it it's an enormous uh spring you see it in there it's a spring with two pieces coming out of it and then this goes in here and this here turns like this and uh, so called adjusts it and then away you go now some people will tell you oh it's a great job and you know it's easier than stuff but my fear is it wouldn't be letting in the right amount at all and what turned me off it was I tested it when I had it running a few times I tested it and I discovered what was coming out was only about a quarter of what it was it was graduated for. Now, having said that, beginner's trial, you know, beginner's. Uh, now, now, this thing here goes down on this and goes into a hole here and this is broke, broke here straight away. So the idea is that this spring pushes this back up. So again, this is cheap stuff. If that were proper stainless steel end on that and a proper pin across, it'd be a much better job. I don't know, could you alter it to make that work? But this breaks here because it's only caught in there. So I don't know how that will work. So I went back to my plunger. It's a half good system. This is a good system here. Well worth, I don't begrudge the bit I spent because this thing is use, useful anyway. I had to get back to invention. Necessity is the mother of invention. And I have a wee bit of a tape around here, just plaster, you know, to fill it up. Uh, and, and then this goes in here and that'll work. You still have the problem of it sucking back and letting stuff flow back. And if I were to amend this, I would put on the end of this pipe here a valve. I'm sure you'd get a small valve. Have it straight for letting it through and have it crooked and i just turn it hang this up like that not if you hang it that way this stuff will run out i'd hang it i'd have it like this and then when you put on your syringe here you can put in your new dose and that would make an ideal job of that and i'll have a look at is that possible and get back to you so i do not have a problem with any of you saying there's an easier way of doing it we do them this and that but be very careful of the person who's full of beans oh god i tell you i do all mine i did 60 cattle and and there was a fellow one of me told me he had 175 cattle not on dose and he was talking about something else and i wondered how he had all this and when he was going to dump his plastic his bales covers you know in the quarry or wherever they're disposing of them irish farm plastics he had the very same amount as me 
So how come he had uh, far more cattle, but he had the same amount of plastic? You see, so so I don't think there's any valve here that I can see. No. So you can see there, even if you put a wee bit of that uh, surgical tape, you know the stuff you buy for your cut fingers, put it on it and leave it on overnight and it sticks to it here. It's enough, it's enough. But I would think a valve here, or even a clamper, that'd be the real job. If you had a thing that would clamp on that and hold that, and then you just take off your, hang it up the way I'm saying, take off this and fill this one. I'd say it'd be a bit slower than the other way, but I'd say it'd be great. I I had my dosage calculated out of my big bottle of stuff yesterday, and I wanted a little over, and I had exactly one cow's dose over, just in case I needed one that starts coughing again. I had one cow's dose over. Now, the other thing is, on some of them, I did put in water. I had a wee bottle, a clean water, and I, I, a plastic bottle, and the second time I took it out, I put clean water in and give them a bit of water after it to wash it down. It's messy as well. So I would imagine all the same that there's a premium grade one of these using stainless steel where the piston and all of this is, um, is, is, is uh, the piston and all of this is uh, made of better stuff with better seals in it. And uh, you still need it to be this hard plastic. Now, another problem is this is very wide in diameter. So it's very hard to get it precise. With the syringe, I mean, to get the uh, full, there's, there's only 20 mil there, and you pull it out to there. If you wanted to double this, you'd have to double the diameter of this. But this means it's not as accurate a reading. So again, let's make up your own mind. Now, just to show you here, do you see the little setting there? See the little window there? I'll put it there now. That's 52. I don't know. Can you see it there? Maybe it's upside down. Maybe it's upside down. So the idea is all right. And I'm sure on the big feedlots all over the world, they're using something like them. Well, I will not accept a poor dose. I want the right dose. And that we 5% extra for good luck. That's the way I like to have it done. And that has always worked a dream for me. So folks, what more can I say? Comment on the neat and give all your views. There's the various ways. Is this thing that they need a drench every year down the throat? Is that how wise tails? Or is it not? I don't know. If you could keep them overnight, dose them the next day, keep them away from water for a few hours, and then let them out, I'd say that's a good a good idea. And it seems to work and get rid of the vermin. Now is the time you'll hear them hoosing and whinging. And even with all the dosing, you'll find that there's one will need another another dose. Uh, some people give them Ivermec and the dose, the dredge. And that's a bit much. I certainly wouldn't all give it the one, the one time anyway. So folks, we'll let you go with that and comment underneath. I'm only trying to help as best I can. Nobody wants vermin in cattle, and that's for sure. Good. Or even, and this will do for sheep as well, I think. But we leave the, we leave keep it to the cattle for now. Good luck. Thank you very much. Bye.